Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to see you guys this morning. And thank you for those that are tuning in, whether it's Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, it is a day in which we've gathered to, to pray, and uh, we're going to open God's Word here in just a few moments. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you, Lord, and, and praise you for this time. Lord, we've gathered to fellowship with one another, but to also call out to you. And Lord, there are so many things in the news right now that are distressing. And, and Lord, we, we see wickedness on display, Lord, constantly. And Lord, we call out to you at this time that your gospel would bring peace, that Lord, your gospel would bring healing, that Lord, your gospel, Lord, would show people the way of truth and righteousness. So Father, I praise you for this time. Thank you for each person who's gathered. Lord, may you be magnified and glorified. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. God's people said. Amen. 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 So just as a reminder, don't forget, we've got a vacation Bible school coming up. We've got a block party coming up. We'll be hearing more about that. Uh, but if you want to volunteer for that, please let me know. Uh, and plus, we need to update our uh, background checks. So if you had a background check done, uh, it's time to get it done again. So we'll, uh, if you haven't filled out a form recently, come see me. We'll, we'll make sure you're, you're, you're good to go uh, with that. But just be in prayer for the upcoming shrimp, black party, and vacation Bible school. Uh, that'll be in June. Uh, it's right around the corner. So we'll be, be ready for that. And, uh, and be in prayer. You know, it does seem like COVID cases are rising. We've heard of people in our own congregation that have tested positive. So uh, be in prayer for that. Uh, but we're going to be in James chapter 1. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 26. just want to read this passage. And as I mentioned in the prayer, we're, we're hearing the news and there is wickedness on display. We saw that in a mass shooting in, in Texas um, just yesterday. Robb Elementary School in uh, Uvalde, I don't know how you say it, Uvalde, Texas. 21 people killed, 19 children and two adults Last week in Buffalo, New York, there were 10 people killed and three injured. Uh, and, and there have been other shootings that have taken place. There was a church out in California where there was a, a shooting. Uh, evil uh, knows no bounds, and evil is on display. But we're also going to address some other issues uh, that have been in the news this week. But let's read in James chapter 1, verse 26. It says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. And so James obviously has a lot to say about the tongue, and he also has a lot to say about what, be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Uh, and so as he's concluding chapter one here, he's reminded, if you think you're, you're, you're faithful, he says, you think you're uh, living right, what's coming out of your mouth? What, what, what kind of things are you speaking? What kind of things are you saying? What are you thinking? Those, those things, uh, do they reflect the heart of God? Do they reflect uh, truth and righteousness? Or is it more like the world? And in many ways, the church is no different than the world. But in verse 27, it says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. So he's saying, if you think you're religious, you know, basically... Uh, Control your tongue, but also this. This is pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father. Is this. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. To visit the orphans and the widows, the most helpless in society. You, as Christians, we must make that mindset to help the most helpless in society. And we think about this with the issue of abortion. Who, who is helpless? I mean, a, a child in the womb is about as helpless as you can get. And so, yes, we want to stand for uh, life, and we want to encourage people to choose life. But we also need to be mindful that wickedness, again, knows no bounds. And often the church is just like the world. And I don't know if you've watched the news this week, but on May 22nd, this past Sunday, there was a report that came out about the Southern Baptist Convention. And it is, it's on every major news network, uh, and, and I want to address that uh, at this time because we need to care well for the, the least among us. 
We need to be serious about that, and we have taken steps towards that. I just mentioned earlier, you know, we didn't used to do background checks. We do background checks now. We want to make sure we've got children's policies in place to help prevent these type things. But it's more than that. We, we, we have to be proactive, and we have to be mindful of what has actually taken place. And so I'm going to summarize some of what this report uh, revealed. But when you look at it, it doesn't just look bad, it is bad. It, 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 you know, we, we sit there and think, well, the Catholics had their sex abuse scandal. You know, well, we're not like them. No, we're, we're sinners too. And there are sinners among us, you know, and there are sinners who were coddled in a sense that, okay, well, you know, we don't want to ruin your life, so we'll do this. And then you, you basically you take care of the abuser and the one that's abused is kind of put off to the side, you know, and not cared for well. Scripture tells us that we're to care for the, the least among us. Jesus had something to say about that in Matthew 25. When you've what? Done it to the least of these? You've done it unto me. And so I just wanted to give a, a background. I mean, we see these the mass shootings that have taken place, and we see, you know, there's something wrong in the heart of people. That you think it's okay to grab a gun and go kill innocent children. I mean, it's just horrific to think about that. And it's horrific to think that in the Southern Baptist Convention there were people who were ignoring sexual abuse and in a sense almost covering it up. And, and by doing that, what, what's the signal you're sending to the world that we don't really care? And we know that there's always, there's the, the few bad apples spoil it for them all, but there was warning signs along the way. So just as a, a reminder, in a sense, I mean, you, we've heard of other industries and places that have had sexual abuse scandals. We mentioned the Catholic Church. Hey, corporate America has had that. Um, different, But it's kind of like, why should we think we're immune to it? Because we're sinners too, and we need to be ready. So what happened is uh, last year at the Southern Baptist Convention, a task force was created to do an independent study of the, what's called the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention. And just as a, a note, you know, we voluntarily cooperate with the Southern Baptist Convention. The Southern Baptist Convention does not set our policies or any of those things. We're not a top-down uh, entity, so to speak. We're basically bottom up. So the church, each church is autonomous. And the Southern Baptist Convention technically only exists like two days out of the year. And that's when they meet in annual sessions. So when messengers go from the different churches, this year it's going to be in Anaheim next month in, in June. Uh, the meeting's going to be in Anaheim. Uh, that is actually when the Southern Baptist Convention actually exists, is when the, the guy gavels in, the meeting is started, when he gavels it out, meeting adjourned. That's the end of the Southern Baptist Convention for that time. But we have ongoing work of the Southern Baptist Convention, and so they've created different entities that have a board of trustees. So you've got the six seminaries, there's seminaries, and each of them have their own board of trustees that are to hold it in trust. You know, they're supposed to hold people accountable. They're supposed to, to do the work of the convention. Uh, there's also the uh, Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, the International Mission Board, the North American Mission Board. All of these have a set of trustees. And then there's this one group that's called the Executive Committee. And they're in headquarters, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, and they kind of control the budget. So when we send money to the, to the cooperative program, they forward that money, basically it goes to Nashville, and then Nashville sends it to the seminary, sends it to the mission boards, and, and does it that way, and take care of those things. Well, the, the task force that was created last year was to examine the fact that the executive committee had been given information about people who were abusing pastors who were abusing people who were still in pulpits and stuff like that and so and they weren't doing anything about it um, that was the accusation so they did a, a study to say hey look we need to look at everything and so they waived attorney attorney client privilege so that they could look at the communications to see uh, what was taking place uh, so as I mentioned before it is it doesn't just look bad it, it is bad and we need to be aware of it and be in prayer so much of what was in this report was already known. If you just you know, did any kind of Google search or whatever, sex abuse, 
Southern Baptist Convention, you could find all kinds of articles and things, and many of these they just included in the in the report. So in that sense, it wasn't anything new. And these would have been things like, you know, uh, uh, actually Paige Patterson, who was at Southwestern Seminary, lost his job as the president of Southwestern because he had uh, encouraged someone not to report a rape and, and some different things. And so the trustee said, no, you, you, you got to go. And so they included that type of story, stories that were already in the public domain. They included much of that. Uh, and so what that was, uh, what was already known was there were people saying, hey, they're mishandling these sex abuse claims. And then they were saying there was accusations of, hey, you're, you're, you're not letting people know that there are people out there that are abusing. And so what was new in this report, and I think what is gathering mo most of the attention in the media right now, is that the executive committee's lawyers and basically one or two people at the executive committee were, were basically kind of controlling the information. And they were saying, we can't do anything because we're not the local church. These were incidents that took place in the local church and therefore we're not responsible and therefore they didn't do anything about it. And one of the things people were saying was just publish a list of pastors who have been credibly accused, published, let us know. And they were saying, we can't do that. So publicly they're saying, we can't do that. But this task force found out that the lawyers had told the executive committee council back in like 2007 or 2008, maybe get my dates wrong, hey, here's a way you could do that. Here's a way you could publish the names of these pastors who just go from church to church who abuse people. Here's a way you can do that and not hold the whole SBC liable. There's a way to do that. Well, no. The whole time, though, the executive committee is telling the trustees, the executive committee is telling the Southern Baptist, we can't do that. <coughs> but yet here they had a way to do it. And I think that just looks, again, doesn't just look bad, it is bad. There was a way you could have done this, and you were more worried about being sued than doing what's right. And that, that's basically what that, that's boiling down to. The other thing is the executive committee general counsel, it was this one individual, was actually keeping a list of credibly accused abusers. They had a list of like 700 pastors and ministers, 400 and some that were Southern Baptists. Not all of these were Southern Baptists, but had, had actually had a list, but never did anything with it. And I think that type of information coming out is like, you mean you knew? There are people, and some of these are still in ministry today. Maybe they aren't as of, since this report came out, but but they they're still in ministry right now, and so they uh, abused, moved to the next place, so to speak. So they were saying we can't keep a list, we can't do that. But although they were <laughs> here, they were doing that, and this uh, task force has found that out. Also. Uh, much of the, the executive committee, the trustees were kept in the dark. You, you see, your trustees are just pastors, lay people from the churches. They're volunteers. And the executive committee has like 86 trustees they, on a rotating basis, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but they were pretty much kept in the dark. They didn't know that the some you know, lawsuits had been brought against the executive committee because, again, just a few people were controlling that information and holding on to it and not informing the rest of the trustees. Uh, I think some of that's going to change as coming up. It's kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have to because that's the whole job of a trustee. Because see, you have an executive committee staff. You have people who are employees who do it all, you know, they're taking care of the basic correspondence and this and that, but, you know, taking care of the finances and, you know, necessary jobs but she has few certain individuals who control the flow of information. And they weren't letting it get to the trustees who are actual, in technical terms, they're the actual owners of that entity. It's the trustee, so um, I think some things are gonna change because of that. Uh, here's another thing that, that kind of floored me, was that uh, a pastor, well-known pastor, Johnny Hunt, was at First Baptist Woodstock, was credibly accused of sexually abusing another pastor's wife back in 2010. And like when say credibly accused or 
they reported it and had there were other corroborating witnesses. And he was just recently was on staff at North American Mission Board until May 13th. He resigned before all this stuff came out. So uh, again, you know, he's saying it's been misrepresented. That's not what happened. But the report says no. Th these are credible accusations. And I, I point all of this out because there's some things that got to change. And there's a whole list of what what's going to uh, be offered. And I don't know how much of that's we could get done this in June, how much it will take like a year because, you know, changing the way you change bylaws and change stuff. I mean, I don't know. But I just want you all to, to be aware that we, we have to pray because Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And we want to make sure that people who are survivors of sexual abuse are taken care of and, care, and they're, they're heard. Because see, what would happen a lot of times is someone may come with an accusation of sexual abuse against someone and people rally around the abuser and say, hey, you shouldn't be bringing that up. And they're, they're put off to the side and, and not listened to uh, in that sense. So we need to pray for the survivors and we need to pray that there'll be wisdom for the Southern Baptist Convention uh, come June. Uh, that's just a few weeks away, really. Uh, June, uh, hence June 13th or 14th or 14th, I think, is when it, when it actually begins. So uh, I'm just going to, had y'all heard some of this in the news? Had yes. I mean, it's almost. They did announce this morning they are going to release the news. Okay. Yeah, I did see that headline. So they are going to uh, say who these guys, individuals are. And uh, so uh, what else have you heard? So we want to, again, pray for survivors, but also pray for the convention to do the necessary things to make the necessary changes so that something like this doesn't happen again. And again, we, the people already have enough reasons to, to not like the church. And this is just another, just add another thing to their list. And I think as Southern Baptists, we need to humble ourselves I mean, I think we take pride in the fact, hey, we're the largest Protestant denomination. So, if we're not going to do what's right, what, what, is, what, what, what does that mean? You know, we, so we've got to trust in the Lord. And so going back to James, James chapter 1, verse 27, pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their, in their trouble. There's that aspect, care for the helpless. Care for the vulnerable. Care for, for those that have been abused. You know, I mean, that, that's that principle that is there. In that culture, the orphan and the widow were the most helpless in society. And so we're to care. But then the next part of that, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. This report says we're too much like the world. It's reminding us of that. And so we need to keep ourselves in a sense, holy, you know, to cling to righteousness, to, to proclaim righteousness, to uphold righteousness. So, you know, it's just, I, I hate to even have to talk about this, but we have to, because we need to, to pray and join other uh, Southern Baptist churches, and, and our brothers and sisters in Christ, and pray that, that truth will prevail and righteousness will prevail and that healing will take place for survivors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you, Lord, and, and I just praise you that even though there's darkness in this world, the, the hope of the gospel shines forth. Lord, we just confess, Lord, our sin before you. And Lord, our sin, Lord, we can all look in our own hearts and see sin. But Lord, we just also confess that, Lord, that they are brothers and sisters in Christ, that people we partner with, Lord, have done things that are contrary to your word. Lord, we know that the, the evildoer who was doing the abuse, that's easy to spot and say, that is wicked, that is wrong, and, and we condemn that, and we have, and we will continue to. But Lord, sometimes maybe we, we just sit there and think, well, it's not that big a problem. 
when in fact this report shows that yes it was and so father we can't be ignorant anymore and so father i pray for survivors of sexual abuse specifically i pray father that you would strengthen them and, and comfort them that lord is saying have their stories heard that lord they would uh, just recognize that they're they're not the one at fault for being abused that lord someone did an evil thing to them and lord but your healing and grace lord can overcome and i just pray father again for those that are perpetrating evil would be exposed and that lord they would uh, be held accountable i pray father that you would help us to be unspotted to keep oneself unspotted from the world to, to not behave as the world behaves and i think that was a lot of what took place they were more concerned with being sued than doing what was right and so father i pray that lord we would uh, do what is right according to your word and so father i pray for the upcoming convention that lord you would guide and protect the messengers who were there lord there'll probably be people protesting uh, even though the convention will be seeking to do the right thing that will i'm sure that it's going to gather a lot of attention and i, I pray father that uh, truth and righteousness and lord your grace would just permeate every aspect of the convention meeting i pray that lord we would seek to do what is right and to do it in the right way so father i, I thank you for each person who's here today lord we do pray for those that are sick in our congregation pray father your healing and grace and strength upon them so father we we love you lord we praise you we pray all this in jesus precious name god's people say amen amen, amen. amen. all right well again i appreciate y'all being here this morning and again those that tuned in appreciate that let's say our vision verse and then we'll get to eat some lunch you know or we'll pray some more and then we'll get to eat some lunch but let's say declare his glory among the nations we get to do this god bless you thank you